Welcome to the Speak and Flow podcast, dear listeners, where we share unique experiences to help you unleash your leadership voice. Today, we have Lindsay Cash. She's a marketing manager for Libertines. She's been doing it two years, and she's going to share some wonderful um, takeaways, strategies to help you up-level your communication. But this is in terms of building relationships, which I think a lot of people think about what to say, how to say it, and then they forget the whole relationship aspect of it. So I'm so glad Lindsay's here. Thank you for joining us, Lindsay. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. (laughs) Yay, me too. Let's dive in. So before we get to the meat of it, it's so fascinating. You walk the talk in terms of uh, relationship building. Can you share with us? how what you do now, but then also how you got there, which is yeah, fascinating of to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a marketing manager at Libertines. I basically manage all of the US initiatives for marketing. For example, I'm currently re- rebuilding our digital presence through website design. I also help with sponsorships at industry events and build connections and partnerships with other companies in the industry. Uh, I got this role from a previous job uh, I was doing. So I was a general manager and marketing manager for EV Now Corporation, where we had rental properties, apartments, cars, and hosted events. And the CEO of Libertines actually came as a customer renting an apartment and a car from us. But we like to sit down with a lot of people that rent from us, kind of understand what they're doing here, how we can help them and do some consulting. So I started by helping my current CEO Um, with his English pronunciation, since he was just coming to the U.S., hadn't been here too much. And then he saw the amazing work that I've been doing for EV now and said, when I come back, I want you to work for me and do marketing for my company. So just like we're talking about, like building that relationship, communicating our value propositions and how we can meet each other and help each other. So that was really awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And have you worked on this? Like, does it come naturally to you or are there certain things? things that you've done to really refine this level of relationship building? Yeah, I think I've always been inclined to build strong relationships with people. Mm -hmm. I'm a very Mm -hmm. social person and Mm -hmm. really value having a strong network of connections, but Mm -hmm. also that that CEO or president of EV now always mm-hmm. pushed me to find the value in everything, find the value in every person. And mm-hmm. so definitely he helped me refine that, but it was mm-hmm. also kind of just a natural instinct as well. Right, right. So it's a natural instinct and curiosity and then to, and then take it a little, little step further to find the value in other people and take that time to do that. Yeah. And recognize too, like the value you can offer to other people Mm. and, you know, have a mutual relationship of giving and taking. Right. Right. And knowing when to do that. Right. When can I give something and when um, this person can also benefit from me and, you know, just like you said, vice versa, like a giving and taking or I don't know, sending and receiving, however (laughs) we want to put it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But taking that time to get to know somebody. Right that's um, meeting them where they're at. You talked a little bit about like what you do with your teams um, and because you're in charge of relationship building, you're in charge of um, you're in at the industry events. You said like building the relationships. How do you do that with new people? Yeah, with new people, it it takes a couple things. Like first, I always notice body language, like does this Mm. person really want to be talking to me? (laughs) Where are their (laughs) feet pointed? Where are their shoulders pointed? If they're fully focused in the conversation. I also have a background in psychology. So I think that helps as well, like understanding their facial expressions, because a lot of people, I mean, body language is the universal language. Mm -hmm. So you can only say so much with your words. Um, But a huge thing that I focus on too is finding a common ground. I work Mm -hmm. with people all sorts of ages and sometimes it's difficult to find how we can relate to each other and build a friendship outside of a work relationship. So I usually try to see if we have a favorite sports team or favorite activity or favorite food. And then you'll see people's faces light up Mm, and that's where the real communication starts when you're talking about something you both love. Right. I mean, do you think that that those type of questions are just general, like they work, like doesn't matter what generation you're in? 
Like, yeah, yeah, uh sometimes. Like, Uh usually I'll point out, oh, I really like your t shirt. Where did you get that? Or, Mm. you know, your style or um, just something that I could pinpoint that's visual. That's not like an interrogation question to like figure out how we can relate, like just to keep it very organic and natural. And sometimes it doesn't work. Like, sometimes you just can't build that communication with someone for whatever reason it may be and knowing when to step away and to you know stop trying because trying mm-hmm. too hard can also hurt <laughs> yes and how do you know how do you personally know like when it's some okay I'm gonna stop this person yeah it's what usually are the yeah usually if like they're not showing any signs of enjoying the conversation. So they're Mm. not smiling. Even if you try to say something funny, they're looking in other directions, looking for somebody else to talk to very short in response. Like that's usually when I know, okay, this person's kind of cold to me Mm -hmm. and, you know, I can respectfully leave the conversation like, Oh, it was really great chatting with you. I hope to, you know, link up with you at the Mm -hmm. event or later on and usually Mm -hmm. I can try again and be like oh hey how's it going and usually if they don't respond then you know okay (laughs) that's what to to give up on which I often run into sometimes in an industry full of you know tech experts and engineers and be not coming from that background I also just have to accept like I don't speak the same language as them no Mm. matter how hard I try Mm. so have you um had a moment where you took it to like personally or you just, yeah. Yeah, I think work? when I first started, especially mm-hmm. when I first started in sales at um, Lucid Motors, I was selling electric vehicles, luxury cars. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I did take it personally sometimes mm-hmm. because it felt like, oh, am I not good at my job? Like, am right. I not, you know, am I not a good salesperson? Right. But that's kind of moments where I would lean on my team, like those strong connections that I've built and relationships oh. that I've built for support. And they'll be like, no, right. Lindsay, that's not what's happening here. Or right. it's good that you recognize this. How can we approach it better next time? So right. in moments where I sometimes would be hard on myself, then I lean on my other relationships to kind of help me see it in a better light. Right. Oh, I love that. Right. Because I mean, you have the people that you do trust and you have them to lean on, they're there to listen to, to help you like think through things, how engagement or conversation did go. What am I learning? Because yeah, we're not going to all, you know, know everything straight out the gate, like it just doesn't happen. But it doesn't mean that you stop going out to to have these interactions where some people would if it's if they take it so personally. And then, yeah, but you continue to to work at it, continue to develop it and go back out there. Well, that's why yeah. you're the ma- marketing manager now in charge of yeah doing lots of different relationship building. Yeah, I think too, I always remind myself like this conversation that may have felt like the end of the world to me is like one or two or three minutes out of their day. And they're probably yeah. thinking about something that's else. They're not going to remember this. Uh-huh. And if they do, then, you know, they won't remember it a couple months from now too. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh-huh. Yeah. Reminding that, you know, you're your own worst enemy sometimes making yourself feel like things are the end of the world when really it's just a small snippet of someone's day and a small yeah. snippet of yours as well. Right. Right. It's just a snapshot. Right. Mm-hmm. So how do you, do you see people not focusing on relationships? Like are there people at your work where they're really not relationship building in terms of communication? Yeah, I, I would say in my seeing? current yeah, my current role, like everyone is is very caring for one another, like mm-hmm. meets each other where they're at, wants to communicate, wants to have a personal relationship and not just a working relationship. And that's something that I really value. Mm-hmm. Um in previous jobs, I have seen people who have lost opportunity and lost success by not building relationships Mm -hmm. like people who are great at their jobs great salespeople, Mm -hmm. you know go-getters but they will make decisions that will hurt the team they will be Mm -hmm. selfish they won't communicate their needs and they won't communicate who they are as an individual and kind of guard that so much Mm -hmm. to where there's a lot of distrust Mm -hmm. and there's been times where you know I've had a team where everyone is really close everyone likes to hang Mm -hmm. out or chat. I mean, you don't need to hang out outside of work. Like Mm -hmm. while you're at work, you can talk about different things, sports, like I said, food, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But this individual chose not to do that. And it was like a group. And then this individual, Mm -hmm. and eventually that led and spread throughout the organization. And that individual Mm -hmm. lost 
you know, promotion opportunities, was stuck Mm -hmm. in the same role for multiple years. And it's unfortunate because I put in the effort to try to meet this person on a personal level. And Uh they're a great person. They're very funny. Uh Like Uh I found so many great qualities within them. But since they Uh weren't willing to share that with the rest of the team, it hurt them Uh and their future career. You know, it's really interesting because you, you took the level and the time to actually talk to that person. Do you get the sense where they just don't trust people? Like, what is the reason for them not wanting to open up? I think it was a, a level of trust. I think it yeah. was also a feeling of um, taking the work and personal life separation Correct. too seriously. Correct. I think some people m- misunderstand that like, no, you don't have to talk about your family, what you do outside of work, like you can protect that. But parts of your personality and the reason why you do things and that kind of just genuine respect to explain that to other people like that is not just your personal life that should also be in your work life. But yeah, yeah, I think it was like, I don't owe anybody anything type of attitude. Right. Um, And since other people weren't trying as hard to kind of break that barrier like I was, Mm -hmm. they just Mm -hmm. thought like it's not worth worth my time. But unfortunately, Mm -hmm. that did hurt them at the end of the day. Yeah. So if anybody is out there and feeling like, oh, I don't owe anybody anything on this team. And there's a part of it that is correct. Like you don't you don't owe anything. However, I think it's like learning when it is okay to share things at a more deeper level. Uh, because then that creates teamwork, that creates collaboration, that creates trust. I think it's a very slight nuance way, right? I think maybe it's also their energy. Maybe there's a, a guard, if someone's sensing a guard within you, regardless of what you're sharing. You, you can be sharing anything, actually, but there, if there's still a guard up, that doesn't matter. I think that maybe it's the, going into almost like a feeling, a trust and intuition, um, which yeah. is really refined in terms of, how we communicate uh, because there are some, a lot of people that may be sharing just some, but then their energy and their openness, um, they may not share a lot, but their energy and openness is there. Um, mm-hmm. And and so like for you, if I'm feeling guarded and, and only sharing bits, that's even worse. I think you just have to monitor. And like you said, not, it doesn't have to be everything. It doesn't have to be personal stuff, but know for yourself first, where is my energy? How open am I? And then second, yeah, what is the content that I'm okay to share? And like, you you know, some things don't have to be shared. Some things can be shared, but knowing the audience and what is necessary to build that trust, because at the end of the day, if you are there as a team, your goal is to be a part of the team and Mm -hmm. you got to know how much is necessary to build that trust. Yeah. I think too, like, that was recognize- complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it is. A, a, but that a very just came out. Thought. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very nuanced thought. How can I build trust with this team? Yeah, I think too, like, yeah. let, by letting down your barriers, you also have to just accept that you're not always right. I think with yeah. that individual as well, it, there was a lot of thinking that, oh, the company wants me to do this, but I don't agree. So instead right. of trying to understand why they want me to do this or trying to explain why I disagree, it's yeah, just yeah. like more guards are put up. Yes. And I think that's something that's really helped me in communication is I'm not right. always right. Most of the right. time I'm not right. Uh, because in order to be right, I need to consider everyone and every aspect of the business. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if somebody also is telling you an idea, there is some truth to it instead of like completely shutting it down. Right. Being open to understand why they're saying this. Where did it come from? How does it relate to my ideas? Like, how can we find a common ground? I think that's what you were saying. Just like complete openness to the situation and yeah. removing those defenses because, right. you know, not one individual needs to be right in a team. Everybody needs to agree on one idea or a couple. Exactly. Exactly. So having that open mindset to go in there versus avoid it, um, mm-hmm. to go in there with curiosity. I think like the people that are guarded, um, they sense that they'd rather avoid it or they may lash out later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> or maybe like if they, like you said, he ends up he or she ends up getting, yeah, their promotions. Other people are getting promoted. They end up feeling excluded. So we don't want that either. Mm-hmm. To for for the leaders out there who want to make an impact and want to make a difference, um, it is 
building that relationship with the people around you. Um, it's mm -hmm. a skill set. It's not something that a lot of us are born with. So it's like, how do we continue to develop that? Yeah. And I mean, I've definitely seen people who have learned that over time, yeah. like yeah. The, the previous uh, boss that basically helped me like find value in myself, find value in other yeah. people in any yeah. interaction. Like he was not trained that way. He was not born that way, yeah. but he taught himself to learn that, to right. study a little bit more psychology, right. to be right. able to build those relationships. Cause he realized that's what he was missing out on and what made him right. his opportunities. Um, like once he reached 50, he couldn't find a job, couldn't be promoted and all of, mm. you know, a common issue in today's world. Uh, so he decided to become a business owner and <sighs> really push himself to communicate with people, to be able to build those relationships, to be funnier, to be more mm -hmm. relatable just to mm -hmm. everybody. And mm -hmm. that's something that I really look up to as well. It's like you, you don't need to always accept what you're born into. You can always transform yourself and grow. Oh, I love that. Speaking of which, so Lindsay, I'd like to ask, um, like I ask all my guests, the the golden takeaway, what is a leadership golden takeaway that you want people to remember? I would say just to show genuine concern for the people that you're leading. It goes mm -hmm. a long way to ask your team, how are you feeling today? How much mm. energy do you have? How much sleep did you get? How can I support you where you're at? more on okay. a personal, emotional, physical level, and mm -hmm. not always in the work sense. Because once you show that genuine care for the people that you're leading, they're going to feel more inclined to move towards a similar goal as you. Mm -hmm. But if it's always just work talk or the deliverables or whatever it may be, and you're not seeing the person for who they are as an individual, you know, then, then you can't be a well-oiled machine. Yeah, yeah, the genuine care, they'll show it back. And if they don't, then you can find another way to relate. But that's my golden rule. Always, you know, listen to the person as the individual, not just the employee. Oh, I love that. And then you'll help them bring their whole self into the into work. Exactly. Versus yeah. parts of themselves. Thank yeah. you, Lindsay. <laughs> that was amazing. So glad you're a part of the podcast. I took away a lot of tons of valuable information and insights. So I really appreciate your time. And I trust that the listeners also have taken away their golden takeaways too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It was great thank talking you. with you today. <laughs> Take care. Until next time, listeners, see you later. Thanks for joining the conversation today. Are you curious on how you measure up with your ability to speak and flow? Come grab my free self-assessment at https colon forward slash forward slash speakinflow.com forward slash assessment. And I'll see you on the other side.